Have you ever wondered why some nebulae look like rainbows of gas and dust, while others look like monochrome blobs? What causes these different colors? How do they relate to the chemical composition and physical conditions of the nebulae? And how do we see them with our eyes and our instruments? Hello and welcome to Curiosity, where we explore fascinating and interesting topics about everything. Today, we are going to talk about why nebulae are so colorful. First of all, what is a nebula? A nebula is a giant cloud of dust and gas in space. Some nebulae come from the gas and dust thrown out by the explosion of a dying star, such as a supernova. Other nebulae are regions where new stars are beginning to form. For this reason, some nebulae are called star nurseries. Nebulae can have different shapes, sizes, and structures depending on their origin and evolution. Some nebulae look like animals, such as the cat's eye nebula or the horsehead nebula. Some look like objects, such as the ring nebula or the hourglass nebula. Some look like people, such as the witch head nebula or the face nebula. And some look like nothing else in the world, such as the Orion nebula or the Carina nebula. But what makes nebulae so colorful? The answer is that nebulae emit or reflect light of different wavelengths depending on their chemical composition and physical conditions. Different wavelengths correspond to different colors that we can see with our eyes or our instruments. There are two main types of nebulae based on how they produce light, emission nebulae and reflection nebulae. Emission nebulae are regions where hot young stars emit intense radiation that ionizes the surrounding gas, making it emit its own light. The most common color in emission nebulae is red because hydrogen is abundant in interstellar space and it emits red light when ionized. However, emission nebulae can also have other colors depending on the presence of other elements and their ionization states. Oxygen can emit green or blue light depending on whether it is singly or doubly ionized. Nitrogen can emit blue or red light depending on whether it is singly or doubly ionized. Sulfur can emit red light when it is doubly ionized. Helium can emit yellow light when it is singly ionized. These colors can mix together to create different shades and hues in emission nebulae. The Eagle Nebula has a pinkish color because it contains a lot of hydrogen, red, and some nitrogen, blue. The Lagoon Nebula has a teal color because it contains a lot of hydrogen, red, and some oxygen, green. The Veil Nebula has a bluish-white color because it contains a lot of oxygen, blue, and some sulfur, red. Reflection nebulae are regions where cold dust reflects the light from nearby stars. The most common color in reflection nebulae is blue because dust scatters blue light more than red light. This is similar to how Earth's sky appears blue because of Rayleigh scattering by air molecules. However, reflection nebulae can also have other colors depending on the color of the stars that illuminate them and the size distribution of the dust grains. The Pleiades star cluster is surrounded by a blue reflection nebula because it contains hot blue stars that emit mostly blue light. The Witch Head Nebula is surrounded by a bluish-green reflection nebula because it is illuminated by Rigel, a bright blue star with a slight green tint. The Rosette Nebula is surrounded by a reddish reflection nebula because it contains large dust grains that scatter red light more than small dust grains. These colors can also mix together to create different shades and hues in reflection nebulae. The Trifid Nebula has a blue reflection nebula on one side and a red emission nebula on the other side, creating a contrast between the two types of light production. The Orion Nebula has a mixture of blue reflection nebulae and red emission nebulae, creating a complex color palette that reflects its diverse chemical composition and physical conditions. How do we see these colors? The answer is that we use different telescopes and filters to capture different aspects of nebulae. Different telescopes use different detectors or sensors to record different wavelengths or types of light. 
Optical telescopes use cameras or CCDs, charge-coupled devices, to record visible light that we can see with our eyes. Infrared telescopes use bolometers or photodiodes to record infrared light that we cannot see with our eyes but can feel as heat. Ultraviolet telescopes use photomultipliers or microchannel plates to record ultraviolet light that we cannot see with our eyes but can damage our skin. X-ray telescopes use proportional counters or CCDs to record X-ray light that we cannot see with our eyes but can penetrate through matter. Radio telescopes use antennas or receivers to record radio waves that we cannot see with our eyes but can carry information such as sound or data. Different filters use different materials or coatings to block out or transmit certain wavelengths or colors of light. Broadband filters use glass or plastic to transmit a wide range of wavelengths within a certain band, such as visible, infrared, etc. Narrowband filters use metal or dielectric layers to transmit a narrow range of wavelengths within a certain band, such as hydrogen alpha, 656 nanometers, oxygen 3, 500 nanometers, sulfur 2, 672 nanometers, etc. Polarizing filters use crystals or films to transmit only one orientation of electric field within a certain wavelength, such as horizontal, vertical, circular, etc. By combining different telescopes and filters, we can create different images of nebulae that reveal different features and details that would otherwise be invisible or obscured. Optical images show us the surface brightness and colors of nebulae as they would appear to our eyes if they were bright enough. Infrared images show us the hidden structures and temperatures of nebulae that are obscured by dust or cold gas. Ultraviolet images show us the high-energy processes and radiation fields of nebulae that are produced by hot stars or shocks. X-ray images show us the extremely hot gas and plasma of nebulae that are heated by supernova explosions or accretion disks. Radio images show us the magnetic fields and synchrotron radiation of nebulae that are generated by charged particles moving at relativistic speeds. These images can be displayed in false colors or real colors depending on how we assign colors to different wavelengths or filters. False colors are used for aesthetic reasons or to enhance contrast or detail. Real colors are used for scientific reasons or to represent what we would see with our eyes. That's all for today's episode. Thank you for watching Curiosity. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more content like this. And don't forget to share your thoughts and questions in the comments below. Until next time, stay curious.